Hey y'all, I'm Teresa. And I'm Mark. And we're your hosts for Tell Me That Story. Where we're gonna tell you true stories of real life happenings. So stick around because you never know what you might hear. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Thirty five years. Thirty five years. Yeah, that's been a that's a long time. It is. You know, sometimes it seems like it's been forever. <laughs> well, it has been. And sometimes it seems like, wow, that's just flown by. Yeah. Yeah. It really, we've had an interesting 35 years. We absolutely have. You know, I remember um, my mom, especially, she's like, y'all have um, had a very interesting. <laughs> we live an exciting life. Exciting we're, life. We're not, we're not the kind of people just to sit around and do nothing. Nope. <laughs> we're very adventurous uh we've 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 done a lot of things some worked and some didn't yeah uh just like this move to tennessee you know everybody thought we were crazy mm-hmm. you know but that's just that's us we like to keep moving and and doing new things and trying new things and um i'm anxious to see what the next 35 years are going to hold I, oh my gosh 35 more years <laughs> oh we can make it to 70 okay yeah <laughs> let's do it other people have done it why can't we that's right that's right (laughs) so i um i was thinking this morning you know how did you what what did you hear when you woke up this morning what did i hear what did you hear i don't know that i heard anything you didn't i heard my back creaking when i (laughs) tried to get up (laughs) oh my goodness yeah i thought you heard a song a song have you forgotten? I guess I have. Well, I've been married 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. I played a song for you, and you oh, woke up yeah, to yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. my word. It's He has forgotten already. Well, it must have not been as much to him Well, I had a birthday me. last week and an anniversary this week, and I turned 56, and I've been married 35 <laughs> years. So, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Good yeah. Lord. The song that you that you recorded for our wedding. You said, where, where did, where'd you get that song? Where'd you get that? I had never heard it before other than, than you singing it had to me. Had you not? No. Really? No, I, I hadn't. Well, and my, that's why I asked you. I said, where did you get that song? And you said you got it from your cousin, cousin or something. Yeah. yeah. So my cousin, who actually played for our wedding, and she just really helped me with wedding music and stuff like that, then... Actually, um, I'd got that from her. And, you know, funny story about our wedding and stuff is, um, and I wanted to sing and I had planned it and I really wanted it to be a surprise, you know, but we ended up not being able to do that. I decided not to surprise you because I I didn't want you to just totally freak out with it being something that wasn't planned. Right. Because you're a planner. Yeah. You're a planner. And I'm spontaneous, right? (laughs) Yeah, it's it's. It's dangerous to do to try to do that live in your wedding because it can go Either one way. of two ways. It yeah. can go really good or it can go south really quick. Yeah. Um, but I ended up recording that. We ended up going into the church. And, I mean, it wasn't a professional recording because I ended up with fever and swollen tonsils yeah. the day of the wedding. Yeah, I remember you were sick. Really sick. Fever and swollen tonsils. But – Everything was done. Everything was decorated. Everything was, um, you know, planned. We had invited so many people. And, of course, yeah. the church ended up being packed out, and it was people standing around the walls yeah, um, not having a place to sit. And it was a nice-sized church. Yeah. But so we ended up going over there and, you know, did the best recording that we could uh, at the time. Yeah, we didn't have any – y'all didn't have any, like – professional equipment like we do nowadays so. no and it was just one take you yeah. sing it you, yeah. know, you, you get it right it. or you it is what it is it is what it is yeah but i think it turned out okay to have fever and swollen tonsils yeah it was good it was good but uh anyhow it was that right there was it was a hard thing you know to be sick the day of your wedding and yeah that was pretty rough but yeah we were just children yeah i was 18 years old i had just turned 18 um the month before that just well let's see five weeks before that yeah i turned 18 and you turned 21 the weekend before that yep so we were babies we were babies yep we've come a long way so (laughs) what would you tell the people if if you were to know everything that you know now would you do it again 
Absolutely. Me too. Yeah. Me too. There's some things I would do different. Yeah. Probably, but I, I think everybody can say that. Sure. If go I back. could, if I could go back and live my life over, what would I do different? Yeah. There's, there's a lot that oh, I would yeah. do different, and I think everybody, everybody that's honest would say, yeah, there's things I would change, mm-hmm. but. But we'd still get married. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And still get married when we did. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I have no regrets. No, none at all. You know, um, but there are highs and lows to every marriage, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that people don't understand nowadays. Mm-hmm. They get married and it doesn't, it's not the, it's not the fairy tale wedding that, or marriage that they expected so they just get a divorce right instead of trying to work through things and make things work and given it's give and take Absolutely. you know you got so many people that they want it this way and the other one wants it this way and there's no compromise right and it falls apart and i hate to say it like this so much but i mean when you think of marriage it's you could also think of it in the terms of a business agreement you know, yeah. I mean, like you said, yeah. in a business, um, there is give and take. Absolutely, that kind of thing. Yeah. And so you think about marriage in a place like that. Yeah, marriage is a 50-50 agreement. It's not a, a 80-20 or a 90-10 or 70-30. It's 50-50. Right. I do know that, um, you know, when you, when you think about marriage, I believe that um, I don't understand how people can – they wonder, like, how can you make it work? How can you how can you be married for thirty five years? How can you be married for fifty years? And one of the things I know that as a as a teenager, I had a pastor's wife that she taught our our class as a teenager and a young adult. And I know one of the things that I probably many of you have seen it before, but they draw that little pyramid, and they've got um, you know the husband on one side, the wife on the other side, and God's at the very top of that pyramid. And as you grow closer to God, you grow closer together. Abs- you know, yeah, I've seen that. That's good. And I love that. I yeah. mean, how do people, how do people not think at it, think about it in those terms? I don't know. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, uh, they and and a lot of those people don't make it, and the ones that do make it, it's just sheer. Um, I, I don't know what the word I'm trying to say. Um, stubbornness. I'm gonna make this work, even if we don't get along. We're coexisting in the same place. We're gonna force it to work. It shouldn't be like that. No. Um, but there is effort in put in in a good marriage. Oh yeah, yeah. it takes it, it's work. It takes a lot of work. I heard a guy say one time. He said the biggest problem with marriage nowadays, and he said this goes both ways. This goes the girl or the boy. He said a lot of times the girl is attracted, and I've seen this. The girl is attracted to the bad boy. Oh yeah. You know, the rebel, the one that likes to get out and and drag race and and drink and, you know, corrals and, you know, that's what they're attracted to. But then when they get married Mm -hmm. and he settles down, what she was attracted to is gone. Yeah. And the same thing with guys. The guy's addict, you know, he's he's attracted to the the bad girl, Mm -hmm. you know. And then when they get married and she settles down, what he was attracted to is gone. Right. That's what the Bible means when it says, be not unequally yoked. Yeah. You know, and people say, well, opposites attract. Yeah, they do attract, but how often does it actually work? Right. And, you know, I was talking to you uh, a little earlier about uh, a scripture that can definitely be applied to marriage. Yeah. What was that scripture? Um, again, I'm 56 years old. <laughs> Life and death. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Right. And those that love it. And those that love it shall eat of its fruit. A lot of people misquote that, mm-hmm. which is not a problem, but it gives it a whole different meaning. They say the power of life and death is in the tongue, and that's not what that's not what the Scripture says. Right. It says life and death is in the power of the tongue. Our tongues are powerful. James talks about our tongues being who can tame the tongue. You know, the tongue is a... It, it's a dangerous thing. Right. It can get us in trouble. And, man, you were big on that, always speaking positive and 
and <laughs> this is another one of those times when you can hear people rolling their eyes. Speak positive. Right. Speak blessings. Don't speak curses. Absolutely. Because it matters what you say. We are saying. huge into that. I mean, huge. That is, that's. I guess that's one of our just that we just hammer down on that. I mean, speak life over yourself. Speak life over your marriage. Uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, maybe you have um, disagreement. So I like Jeff and Sherry Easter, who is um, Southern Gospel song uh, song group. Um, they, one of the things they would say is we have, we don't have fights, we, we have intense moments of fellowship. Right. And I yeah. loved, I love the way they put that. That's <laughs> yeah. so funny to me, you know. So we have had some intense moments of fellowship. <laughs> you know, I heard Perry Stone talking about, when he was talking about speaking positive, mm-hmm. he said, our words are powerful because God's words are powerful and we're created in his image and our words become law. Absolutely. So if we say just hypothetically, if I say, well, this is going to, tomorrow is going to be a terrible day, mm-hmm. you know, or I say next, you know, if I speak something negative before the enemy, before the enemy can do anything, he has to go before the throne to get permission. This is what Perry Stone said. And he runs to the throne and he says, this is what they said. Their words become law. You have to honor it. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, that makes sense. Absolutely. It's it it acts absolutely makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you know we try to be positive, and I'm they're not going to tell you there's not times when I'm not positive. Oh yeah. You know sure. we all have aggravations and frustrations, and we say things that we probably shouldn't say or right. think things that we shouldn't think because we're not perfect people. Because we live we're, in a fallen world. <laughs> we're human. We still live in this fleshly body, yeah. but speak positive. Right. You know, and that's a big part of marriage is speaking positive, you know, speaking friendly things to your your wife or your husband, even your children. Right. You know, I've heard people say, oh, you won't ever amount to nothing. You're never going to amount. That's wrong. Right. Not only does it does it put the wrong ideas in that child's head, but it actually can affect their future. Right, and it can be that way with a husband and wife. So, absolutely, you know. And one of the other things that I was thinking about was, and it that's kind of goes back into what you said that could put wrong things in their mind. And I wanted to talk about that also. Um, you know, sometimes I think the enemy will start trying to put things in your mind, and it's like, oh, he doesn't really love you. Yeah, he never really loved you. He don't love you anymore. That right. kind of stuff. And, and if you ever hear those kind of things, you've got to realize that that's just a trick and a tool of the enemy that he uses. Because yep. the Bible says that we've got to cast down vain imaginations. Right. Right? Yeah. And so when you if you ever hear those things, you don't feed into it. Right. You don't feed into that. You've got to say, yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, they do. They right. love me. You yep. know, and... I know that that was something that I struggled with some in my earlier years of marriage. I would hear that he doesn't love you yeah. anymore. He doesn't love you oh, anymore. Oh, I've heard it too. And I would ask you sometimes, like, do you still love me? And you would say, well, yes, yeah. I'd love you. Why would you ask me that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I had to realize but that that was a trick of the enemy. But the Bible tells us to renew our mind. Right. Cast down vain imaginations, renew our mind. And so we want to encourage you today to to do those things. If you hear negative things that's, um, you know, just take it for what it is. It may be a, a trick and a tool of the enemy to try to, to, to drive a wedge there, right? Right. And, you know, I was talking about marriage being 50-50. I know a guy. I'm not going to call his name. But I know this guy, and he he told me. He said, I don't do anything at home. He said, I don't cook. I don't help clean. I don't do anything. He said, I work, and when I get home, I don't do anything. That That's not the way to make them. And him and his wife are always having problems, and mm-hmm. I can see why. Absolutely. He has trouble with his children. You know, that's not the way. That's That's not the way to make a marriage work. No, I'm so proud because you love to cook, and I, I love, love I love to cook, and I have loved to let you cook. <laughs> <laughs> I love to cook. I'm not too crazy about washing dishes, but I will. 
But you, know? you will. And that's what you're saying, you know. And it's not just that. I mean, um, you know, there's things that I help do, you know, that uh, maybe other women don't do. You know, and it's just we've kind of just learned together of kind of who does what or I'll help you do whatever, you know, and you help me. Um, and that's just that's just what a marriage is, give and take. Yeah, it's a team. You know, right. it's, it's just working together. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to say one thing, Mark. Um, something that I feel like is a fantastic piece of advice. You know, my mom and dad, um, they've been married, you know, lots and lots of years. And, and my grandparents were married, um, you know, so many years. I know it was, I think it was over 60 years. And um, one of the pieces of advice that my dad gave gave me gave us whenever we first got married before we even got married they said <clears throat> he said this is something that my mom told me so it came from his mother right and she said um if you have an argument not if but when because you will you will have a disagreement when you have a disagreement i don't want to know about it Right. I don't want to know about it because you're going to get over it. Yeah. You're going to get over it. But when you come and you tell or you go and you tell somebody, then especially if it's somebody that you're close to, like your, you know, your parents. Now, I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking about a disagreement. Right. <clears throat> um, that that person, you, you know, you're going to get over it. But then that's planting a seed into them to where they're getting aggravated at you. Yeah. And so that's something that I feel like that we prided ourselves on. Yeah. That we 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 took that advice. We kept our problems to ourselves. That's right. Any kind of. Um, we didn't blast them on Facebook and social media <laughs> and you know run to everybody and say oh she's doing this or he's doing that. If we had disagreements or we had issues, we kept them and worked them out with among ourselves. Absolutely, with prayer and. And sometimes intense moments of fellowship. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, also another good piece of advice, you know, and this comes from the Bible. The Bible says don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Yeah. Don't go to bed mad. Right. You know, try to make things right before you go to sleep. Yeah. Because. You might stay up late. <laughs> yeah. And we've had some late nights. We've had some really late nights trying to work it out. But I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah. Number one, we're not promised we're going to wake up in the morning. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's that's a big reason. Yeah. You know, you have a big fight with your spouse and God calls them home in the middle of the night. You're going to live with that for the rest of your life. The mm-hmm. last words that you spoke to them were words of anger. Mm-hmm. That's that's a that would be terrible. Right. And I'm not going to lie and say that I've never gone to bed mad. I have. But I think it's best to try to work those things out before you go to sleep. Yeah, as much as absolutely possible. As much as possible, yeah. And then also, when you leave in the mornings, or leave whenever, you know, you want to make sure that you tell them that you love them. Yeah. Um, you know, let them know that you're you're gone for the day or whatever, and you tell them that you love them. And, yep. and you, I usually leave before you do. Yeah. You know, and I usually tell you that I'm gone, and you always say, Okay, have a good day. I love you. Be careful. I mean, every <laughs> yeah, day. That's, that's my script in the mornings when you're leaving. Um, yeah, you know, another thing I was going to talk about is, you know, being thankful. Mm-hmm. You know, being thankful not f- just for each other, but for all the blessings that we have. And I, this may be chasing a rabbit down another trail, but this has been on my mind a lot lately. You know, we need to be we need to be thankful for what we have. Every time I pray, I say, God, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for what you've done for us and what you've given us. I heard a guy say one time, and this has stuck with me for years. He said, what if you woke up in the morning with only the things that you thank God for today? I know. When you've told me that, that he said to you, I, it stuck with me, and I always try to tell like, the Lord how thankful. Yeah, because, you know, and I've been guilty of this. You look around and you see people that that are just as lost spiritually as they can be. No, no thought of of their eternity. No thought of anything of God. And they're so successful, and they have these big, huge houses, and they have all this stuff. And sometimes you wonder how in the world can they have all that stuff, you know, and live like they do and here we are trying to live for the lord and and struggle and we have struggled in the past you know oh yeah um 
But, but God's always made a way for us. But the Bible says that they're 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 getting their reward now. Mm-hmm. You know. But you know, as far as being thankful, we have so much. You know. You know, if you've got God, you've got everything. Absolutely. But I'm talking about material things. We have so much more than so many people. Um, There's always somebody that's in worse shape than you are. If you don't believe it, drive around some of these big cities and just look. I know. Um, I don't want to get in. We we were on a mission trip to West Virginia one time, and it completely changed my thinking on being thankful. Absolutely. Because I saw people... The the poorest person I know was rich by their standards. Right, absolutely. And that's that's a part. I know that kind of went off topic, but that's also a part of marriage is being thankful. Because if 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 I'm thankful for what we have and and you're not, we're never going to be in agreement. Right. I think that um, that to be have a more of a successful marriage maybe and not struggle. With as much at the very beginning of your marriage, um, I think that would be good for some more counsel from um, pastors. I know um, we really didn't have the counsel that now at being married 35 years that I can look back and I'd say, I wish that we had had the counsel then of this. Yeah. Um, One thing is how do you how do you think about holidays and, and, and preparing this couple for what they're going to go into for holidays and, and getting that, you know, laying that on the table. How do you feel about spending money? How do you feel about um, saving money? How do you feel about children? How do you feel about, you know, all these different topics that we didn't have any of that? Right. The financial stuff is a big part. It is. That's a big part of it. And they don't teach it in school. You have to learn it the hard way. Yeah. That we did. You know how to balance a checkbook. How, you know how well, to how that. to manage credit cards. How to do this and how to do that. They don't teach you that stuff in school. Right. Well, I had taken an accounting class, and so I knew more of that kind of stuff than you did. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it we showed. <laughs> it showed. <laughs> it showed. <laughs> so there was some tension, you know, um, yeah. in the beginning. And um, that's part of what I was talking about learning the hard way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You spend all your money, and then when bills roll around, you're like, oh. I'm broke. <laughs> yeah. But um And I know people is, that that have been married for years that still do that. Yeah. As and soon yeah. as they get their check, they go blow it all <laughs> and then when it comes time to pay bills, they don't have any money and they're begging for money. Right. Yeah. Let's take care of our priorities first. Our yeah, exactly. responsibilities first. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> One of the just a, another quick little thing that I wanted to talk about as far as marriage and something that that really and you were mentioned Perry Stone a while ago. Um um, I was just thinking about a day. I, it's forever etched in my mind, and we were having some problems. Uh, we were having, you know, we were having several moments of intense moments of fellowship. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed like it was a couple of weeks that we were just like um, misunderstanding each other and that kind of thing. And um, I remember that we were sitting in the living room, and you said, "Wait a minute," you said. What did you just hear me say? And I repeated back to you what I heard you say. And you said, that's not what I said. Right. That's not what I said. And then it was so strange. We had that discussion. Yeah. And I think it was like two days later, we ended up going to camp meeting. Yep. a church camp meeting and Perry Stone was there if you if you don't know who that is and you might want to look him up on YouTube um, yeah his, name, his program is called manifest yeah. m-a-n-n-a dash f-e-s-t yeah. manifest very wise man of God very wise and he was preaching um, at that camp meeting and he talked about how Satan is the principality of the air yep and so he can take those words and twist them. And that's, we know that he's the author of all lies and he likes to twist and turn things. And so he began to talk about in marriages and he talked about that day, he gave an invitation to come forward for prayer that if you've been having that issue, if y'all been not really understanding what the other one is saying, or you've been having a, um, 
you know, disagreement or argument or whatever over that. And there were so many um, couples that yeah. came forward. Yeah. And we looked at each other like we were in awe. Yeah. You know, it's like, was because he Because we sitting? had just yeah. experienced that. Was he sitting in the living room? <laughs> right. We had just experienced that, and if I hadn't heard him say that, I would have, I was, I would have questioned that. But he's, he actually said that Satan can turn those words around right. and make you hear something different than what I speak. Right. And I thought, wow, yeah, I never thought of that, but yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and that's where a lot of misunderstandings come into play. Yeah. So. So we, you know, we we haven't had a perfect marriage, but it's been it's been good. Uh, we've grown a lot together. We've learned a lot together, and we just want to encourage people that are maybe going through some marital issues or problems. You know, the old say in the family that prays together stays together. Mm-hmm. That's that's a fact. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Um, so one of the things know, I would like to say also, Mark, is that um, faithfulness. Yes. Faithfulness. Yes. Is enormous. Let me look at the camera. <laughs> Faithfulness yes. is, is enormous. It's big. And it hurt my feelings whenever I had a family member that suggested yeah. that I was unfaithful to you, and that's the way that I was able to um, get pregnant. Yeah. Um, and because we were told that we could never have any children. We were married 19 years before um, our children came along, and one's adopted and one's by birth, and it hurt my feelings so yeah. much. and it made me mad. To find out that I had a family member, and there's no telling how many other other people said that. Yeah, but he you, did end up coming to you and apologizing did. for it. And I prayed. I said, God... I'm asking you to let that baby look so much <laughs> like Mark so they will know. And they she will did. know. Yeah. I mean, in the womb, they, they did the sonogram and everything. And that lady, do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Her, her, her sonogram pictures looked exactly like my baby pictures. Yeah. I was like, wow. That lady that was doing the sonogram, she's like, I've never seen a sonogram picture that looked more like the daddy than this baby does. Yeah. She said it was just... It and the sonogram pictures were so clear. They're almost like a photograph of the baby outside the womb. It was amazing. Yeah, it removed all doubt for sure. Mm. And so I was so thankful because we've never been unfaithful to one another. No, never. And um, so what, I think our main struggle has been that we've we've dealt with sickness a lot. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody's got things that they deal with. But you and I, we've we've gone through a lot of sickness, and we did right at the very beginning. And before our first anniversary, I mean, we started battling um, with you having cancer. Yeah. And um, right out of the gate. <laughs> right out, and uh, and that made us stronger. Yeah, it, it does. It made us stronger. It does. And you hear you hear people saying, "What is the secret to a happy marriage?" And my answer is always the same. Put God first in your marriage. Absolutely. Let him control. Let him, you know, I hear so many people say, well, I I don't like church. I don't like religion because all they do is want to control you. Let God be in control of your marriage Mm -hmm. and watch it work. Yeah. Or you can go your own way and watch it struggle. Right. I mean, it's your choice. That's it's. That's just the way it is. Because he'll guide you and direct you along that along that marriage path. Yeah. 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 Well, we want to just um, end right here, and we want to just um, hope that that is something that we've said today has encouraged you in some way. Um, whether you're married or whether you're not married, we hope that um, that you have gained something from this. And Mark, um, would you like to pray over people today in their marriages? I will. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray right now, Lord, that anybody that may be listening or watching, Lord, that maybe having problems in their marriage or maybe planning on getting married and and just not sure if, if it's the right thing lord i pray that you would speak peace to their heart god i pray that you would show them the way god help them to see what your will is for their life and for their marriage and help them to always look to you first god so their marriage will be built on a firm foundation god in jesus name we pray amen, amen. Well, we hope you've enjoyed it today. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you next time on Tell Me That Story. God bless y'all. See you later.